the power that I have is really the power of convening. And you have done that with such vision, with such focus, and who you have convened, the curating that you have done of human ideas and of our aspirations and our imagination has been second to none. And I think you articulated so beautifully where we are in this moment in history. When perhaps our challenges are the greatest and many people sit around complaining about them, and yet right in front of us is somebody who's going to solve it. To our left, to our right, our neighbor, at our school, at our workplace, we have an unleashing of human creativity unparalleled ever. And at this moment, the X Prize is the tip of that spear of human innovation that is rethinking everything. The fundamental challenges we face, the things that we never imagined, and I'm so pleased that you're here in Los Angeles because I believe this city is a deep reflection of that. When you think about this moment, the political system, and I appreciate you said I was one of the smartest politicians you met, that's kind of like being the tallest building in Palos Verdes. Um, so it's admittedly a low bar. But we see across too many sectors, private and public, too many old ways of doing things. I inherited a great city, and we had cutting edge systems. Unfortunately, they're all from the 1980s and before. We had folks who were resistant to cloud computing because they said it's better if we have interns programming in Cobalt and Fortran with servers that are dripping battery acid than somehow giving it out to those who could do it for less money, more efficiently, and with greater security. But the moment that you incentivize and turn people's minds towards something else, I'll give you an example just down the road. Our city's recreation and parks department, one of the finest in the world, cut to the bone during a recession, unfortunately had inefficiencies just down at the Harbor Recreation Center here by the port in San Pedro. And one man who had recently come on board had seen that uh, the air conditioning HVAC systems, he's in charge of all of them for every rec and parks facility in the city, was on all the time, no matter what. And he said, that's so frustrating to see us burning money, electricity. He went to his superiors, said it's too difficult to figure out a way to fix all of that. Let's just keep it the way it is. So he went on his own time and on his own dime to the hardware store, got himself a little button, installed in the gym that he was at a way for when people leave the court to press the button, turn off the air conditioning. It was so successful, for 40 bucks he was able to do that, that now when they show the success of that, citywide we've done it, and in the first year alone we'll save in probably around a half a million dollar range, which for a city budget of five billion might not seem like a lot, but when we're cutting youth programs, we're charging families to do the most basic things. How can we ask people to be the next visioneers if they don't even have a place to play as they're growing up? So innovation is everywhere around us. And here in Los Angeles, we've got, I think, in some ways, the best platform for innovation of all. And I believe that I, as a mayor, and I know we're going to have my friend Gavin Newsom, I think, is going to be coming here later, too, who's been a, a great mayor and our lieutenant governor now. I believe that the national level of government is so broken that we have a lot of partnering to do with the X Prize. There's a book out right now that might sound self-serving. I have it right by my bedside. It's called, If Mayors Ruled the World. <laughs> but what it says, Ben Barber, who wrote, uh, I think, Jihad versus McWorld and other books, he said, it's really the place where innovation is happening now is in the city. A majority of human beings live in the city for the first time in our existence. 75% of our global GDP comes out of our cities, and more and more and more people are flowing into them. And because they are now the more nimble political platform, when we see at the national level two parties that are more interested in killing each other than in moving an agenda forward, we have to look to those other places for bipartisan or nonpartisan solutions that come forward. I spend more time sometimes on the phone with a mayor in Rio de Janeiro um, or in Vancouver than I do with my own elected representatives in Washington because I can get more from them oftentimes than working a federal system. When you think about traffic and transportation, when you think about the environment, when you think about economic development moving forward and education, those things are being innovated at the local level. 16 mayors who were elected last year throughout the United States, and I convened a meeting at the White House with the president and vice president who were very generous with over two hours of their time. But as we went around in New Minneapolis and New York and LA and Seattle and Detroit mayors and the rest of us started sharing ideas, we realized that it is at our level that we have to come up with the innovations because no help financially or oftentimes intellectually will be coming out of Washington. I know later today you'll look at one of the topics that you're looking at is in cities, disaster prediction and response. 
and Dr. Lucy Jones, those of you who live in LA know her as Earthquake Lucy, who has come in to city government from the United States Geological Survey. She lives four days a week in City Hall to come up with better ways that Los Angeles can be resilient, to be prepared for and to respond to disasters that, as you'll hear from her, if we have a earthquake that cuts across the California aqueduct, we may not have water for six months coming in from outside our city. What can we do to build the sort of resilience so that we have local water supplies, which is why I've set a challenge to our city of reducing our imported water by 50% by 2025. So I want to offer to you, Peter, and to the entire XPRIZE family, a partnership with the mayors of this country and this world that whether it's through the U.S. Conference of Mayors, whether it's starting here in Los Angeles, let's find a platform where we say, look, you can have the ultimate scale, the city itself, for the ideas that you're coming up with. And here in L.A., think about what we have. We've got the number one airport in the world for flights that originate and that end in a single airport. We've got the number one seaport in America. 43% of the goods that come into this country come through the port just to the south of where we are today. We've got the number one municipal utility in the country, not by customer service, which I'm reforming, but by size. We're number one in terms of human diversity, not just now, but ever in human history. We have over 220 languages spoken here, over 150 countries of origin. 39 countries find their largest populations outside the home country here in LA. In fact, for some countries, it's the second biggest city, period. The biggest Mexican city is Mexico City. LA is number two. You go back to Mexico for number three. We're the only city in the world to have three top 100 global universities, the only American city to have three top 25 uh, universities. We're the undisputed number one creative capital of the world. The Guardian newspaper in the UK just did a, a survey of brand strength of cities everywhere from Venice to Paris to Tokyo to Seoul to Mumbai. And guess what city came out number one? Just above New York and just above London, Los Angeles. We also have some of the greatest challenges, though. So combined with this amazing resource of diversity and intellectual creativity, the highest entrepreneurial rate of any city in America, wherever more than one out of 200 people are entrepreneurs, we also have the worst traffic. We're the homeless capital of America. We face some of the most failing schools anywhere in the globe. And here, this wealthy city that should be able to figure that out. I often make the pitch to business folks, to entrepreneurs, uh, to social innovators. Come to LA because if you test your idea, your product, your story in Los Angeles, it's like testing it in the world in a single place. Los Angeles is the kind of city where somebody, as I'm speaking now, should point that way, is landing at LAX, getting off that plane, and no matter where they're coming from, they can find some place that feels like home within a half hour. The restaurants, the smells, the food, the taste, the, the language that's being spoken. Or you can be a fourth generation native of this place like myself and go 10 minutes in a new direction and see something you've never seen before, a collision of ideas and cultures and people. And here in Los Angeles, I often think that we are in some ways the place where the peril and the potential of our urban life exists. So in my last 56 seconds here, let me say this to you. I hope, first of all, we're very proud that XPRIZE is in LA. But I hope that you will take on the idea that we are a place where you can test and innovate. That yes, why are we building subways underground, which we do need to finish, when autonomous vehicle lanes, or the idea of transportation not being multimodal, but a single commodity that you can put on your smartphone and decide, not needing to own a car anymore, whether you want an Uber to pick you up autonomously, whether you want to get on public transit, whether you want to have a shared car, take out a bike, do whatever you need, without the pressure and the space of a city needing to be built out for cars that 96% of the time are not driven, that only 3% of the energy goes into their wheels, and that only 8% of the space that we build for cars to be parked or to drive through ever has a car on it at any given moment. So dream big, and I'll close on this. Aristotle wrote that the city came into being to preserve life, but it exists for the good life. In other words, we came to cities to be together and to be safe, to find that security, but that wasn't the end goal. The end goal was to find and to define for ourselves what the good life meant, that breakthrough innovation, that company you can start so you know what it feels like when you're providing jobs to people, that concert you go to on a date where you fall in love as you stare into someone's eyes and listen to something that stirs something in your soul. The word for politics and city come from the same Greek root, polis, 
People came to the city in order to engage in politics, not because it was a dirty thing, because it was the exchange of ideas and the innovation of humanity is the truly limitless resource that we have, the ultimate renewable resource. So be brave, be strong, and I challenge you, use us, the mayors of this country and this world, to be the platforms to scale up the genius that you will find. Thank you so much and have a great conference.